dear students i welcome you for the today's lecture related to the mixing operation in which we are going to basically discuss what is mixing agitation and the different types of the mixing operations like dispersion then basically what a uh, agitator is a mixing tank is there we can see the reactor or a pressure vessel in which an agitator that is attached so these uh, agitators they are consisting of a motor then the gear reduction that is the speed reduction then the mechanical seal that will be provided a shaft will be there and an impeller will be attached to the shaft so this is making an agitator assembly so this complete assembly that is considered to be as an agitator which is incorporating a motor a gear box which is used for speed reduction or speed increase because all the motors are with the fixed rpm you may be requiring the desired rpm for the shaft or for the impeller and for that purpose you require this uh, speed reduction box and the mechanical seals are there which prevents the leakages of the vapors from the tank to the outside so it is uh, your tank will be attached securely so that the vapors will not go out from this tank this is a mechanical seal you have already studied the different seals in uh, your uh, previous subjects so this is your basically the tank and in this tank the agitator that is fitted now why you require this mixing operation the term mixing that is applied to the operation which tends to reduce the non uniformities in the composition properties temperature of the material not only it can be restricted to the composition properties and temperature the other things that can also be studied but the basic purpose is to have the uniformity in the system and to achieve this uniformity we are trying to do the mixing operation so mixing and agitation is the heart of our chemical process industries basically without mixing the related to heat transfer mass transfer and chemical kinetics all the three processes will have a certain limitations and our chemical engineering that deals with the heat transfer mass transfer and chemical kinetics or chemical reactions and which requires the uniform mixing or the uniformities of the different components so that the finally the reaction will takes place in a fast way its kinetics should be the good one so the mixing systems that again depends on the phase so it can be the solid liquid and gaseous phase all the three phases that can be or the permutation and combination of this solid solid or solid liquid or solid and gas or it can be your liquid liquid gas liquid and gas gas so all the six different combinations plus the three phase system that can be used now it is necessary to control the quality of the product that is what we are thinking of reducing the non uniformities so quality of the product that is also to be studied then the agitation is a means 
whereby the mixing of the phases can be accomplished and by which mass and heat transfer can be enhanced between the phases or with the external surfaces. In addition to that, your chemical kinetics that will be also needed. In its most general sense, the process of mixing is concerned with all the combinations of the phases of which the most frequently occurring ones are number one the gases with the gases gases into the liquids that is gas is dispersed into the liquid that is a dispersion the gases with the granular solids that is the fluidization or pneumatic conveying or drying so all these are related with the gases and the solids or granular solids then the phases associated with liquid into the gas that is the spring and atomization this process of uh, gas into the liquid that is a dispersion however the liquid into the gas that is the spring or atomization the difference in the terminologies that exists so one has to understand what is being dispersed in which medium so that is the important thing then the liquids with the liquids that can be the emulsification that can be the dispersion or that can be the blending then the liquids with the granular solid that is the suspension dissolution and the gases with the granular solids that is the fluidization, pneumatic conveying or dry. So when it is a solid then it is associated either with the gases or with the liquids. Then your terminology is again that is going to vary that is suspension and dissolution associated with the gas and, uh, with the liquid and solids and if it is a gas and solids then it can be the fluidization, pneumatic conveying or the drying process. The next is the pastes with each other and with the solids, pastes are there. Then the solids with the solids that is mixing of the powders or it can be the blending also. In case of your polymers, we are blending the fresh, uh, we are blending the uh, wastage or the raw material uh, into the raw materials that is also the process of the blending that is there so this terminology that is dispersion fluidization pneumatic conveying drying spraying automation emulsification blending then suspension dissolution so all these terminologies are having its own importance and one by one we will see the details of all these terminologies. So it is all the basically the different phases and what is happening in each phase. Based on that the terminologies are associated. So it is the used to make uniformity in composition, temperature and properties of the material. This mixing operation improves the properties of the material that is the basic purpose and mixing gives the desired flow pattern to give the material a flow pattern that is also required. Whenever the flow patterns are focused the flow patterns if they are uniform then and only then the consistency of the products will be there. If these flow patterns are at a very random or very chaotic conditions, then uh, the uniformities in the final product composition can vary. So flow patterns should be consistent. Then these uh, operations which uh, needs the mixing, that is what uh, we have already talked, that is the solid suspension, dispersion, dissolution, in addition to that the heat transfer that is also required then blending of the miscible liquids chemical reaction you will require then in case of crystallization you will also require this mixing operation 
so all these operations are to be studied one by one and uh, the good mixing system should have uh, some of the requirements that is it should be with the minimum power consumption that is the basic requirement it should have the minimum power consumption with maximum uniformities maximum uniformity or you can say the maximum uh, reduction in the uh, non uniformities how much limit is there um, you, in case of your uniformity it can vary from uh, requirement to requirement also so the efficient mixing in the optimum time time is another variant quality and time these are the two different variables so in a minimum time maximum output with the minimum power requirement and that will give me the best economic solutions so minimum maintenance durable trouble free operations whenever uh, the maintenance issues are there mechanical parts are there the maintenance will be there breakdowns will be there and that is going to cause the problems you have to take the shutdowns and which involves the cost so this maintenance problems are also to be minimized and finally the compactness of the design that should be there now first is your solid <coughs> solid suspension now suspension to whom you will call that is the when uh, if you will try to have the powder of say calcium carbonate in water and uh, put that uh, solid uh, particles of calcium carbonate in the water and well stir it you will get a suspension of this calcium carbonate particles in the water now how you are going to stir that that is going to vary if you will stir just for a half a minute it will get non uniformly distributed but if you will stir it properly with a sufficient time then you can observe the uniform slurry will be there uniform dispersion will be there so this is the uniformities in the composition that has to be focused so this suspension of uh, fine solid particles in the liquid so solids and liquid solid particles and the liquid that will be associated with this process of suspension so solid and the liquid even the solid particles will be there and which will be very easily suspended which will be easily float into the liquid phase that is the solid suspension in the catalytic hydrogenation processes or almost all your catalytic processes where the catalyst should be uniformly distributed into the liquid system so solid catalyst particles and the hydrogen bubbles they are dispersed into the liquid phase then it's a merely a physical mixing operation which involves the liquid and solids but they are immiscible the solids should be immiscible if the solids are miscible then it will become the process of dissolution now solid particles in liquid if they are immiscible it is a suspension you will get and if the solid particles they will be dissolved into the liquid it is a process of dissolution now when it's a solid particles which are suspended into the liquid a slurry will be formed a slurry of uniform composition having the particles in suspended form is to be prepared so this slurry will be formed in the process of suspension and 
the experiment of a sedimentation that is associated with this uh, solid suspension uh, then what are the re energy requirements that is the percentage of solids in suspension how much amount of this calcium carbonate or any solid particles that is to be suspended in how much amount of the liquid then what must be the particle size if it is a very fine particle size then it will be very easily distributed it will be very easily suspended and there is a less possibility or it will take more time to get settled to the bottom when the particles are smaller one then the particle velocity and the density the particle velocity that means this uh, suspended particles they should be moving in with what velocity what is the effective velocity and that depends on the density of the solid particles if it's a highly dense uh, density is more then these particles will settle at a faster rate so to maintain it in a suspension form you will require the continuously high energy now if uh, once the particle are small and with a lower density uh, then uh, once they are agitated or once they are mixed they will be in a suspension form only thing is that one has to maintain that in the suspension form but if their density is more then you will require the more energy to maintain it in a suspension form so the quality of suspension uh, whether the uniform suspension is desired or just the motion of particles is desired Uh, then the next process is the dispersion dispersion that is associated with the gas into the liquid as the fine bubbles so this is the gas in a liquid gas is dispersed into the liquid the terminology the gas is dispersed into the liquid giving you the fine bubbles small bubbles that is related with the oxygen from the air in a suspension of microorganisms for fermentation or for the activated sludge processes in the wastewater treatment so these are related to the wastewater treatment where you are uh, using or supplying the oxygen for the microorganisms that is your aerobic processes where the dispersion is needed that is the gas should be uniformly dispersed into the liquid it is a mixing operation and it involves two or more immiscible liquids or solids and liquid into the pseudo homogeneous mass or the gases and liquid so uh, it is the combination of uh, gases in liquid one can very easily imagine this uh, uh, bubbles not only to that but it can be with the two immiscible liquids also two immiscible liquids they are dispersed then immiscible liquids are these uh, then the solids and uh, liquids into the pseudo homogeneous mass then the pigmented paste or toothpaste is an example of a dispersion uh, in the pigment you can save the pigment that is dispersed into the paint uniformly so the energy requirement per unit volume can vary widely and uh, uh, this is the example associated with the oil hydrogenation again in which the hydrogen gas that is uh, dispersed into the uh, liquid oil the gas liquid dispersion gas is immediately distributed throughout the liquid usually for chemical reactions and in addition to that to the wastewater treatments if the gas rate is increases 
the energy requirement to obtain the uniform gas dispersion also increases. So it depends on your gas flow rate. How much amount of the gas rate? If it is increased, your energy requirement that is bound to increase. If the temperature increases, the rate of reaction between the gas and liquid increases and hence the energy requirement is also increases. Then the energy requirement for dispersion is a function of bubble size which in turn gives the desired mass transfer rate. That means what is the bubble size? That is the surface area per unit volume of the bubbles. <coughs> The surface area of the bubbles, if there are more number of small bubbles will be there, then they obviously it will have the higher surface area per unit volume. That is essential for your mass transfer and finally essential for your chemical reactions. If the pressure increases, then the energy requirement decreases. <coughs> So this is the process or uh, you can say the oil hydrogenation unit where the air that will be supplied. Then the information and for the gases dispersion process. That is the details of the vessel dimension. These are the points which are to be looked into the process of dispersion. Details of vessel dimensions. How the vessel geometry is? It's a vertical or it's a horizontal vessel. <coughs> generally, in case of gas and liquid processes, it is the vertical processes they are uh, generally preferred. So that the residence time of these gas bubbles that will be more. Then the reaction rate. What is the reaction kinetics? How much time uh, the reaction needs? Then the volume being handled into the vessel. Then the operating pressure and temperature. Uh, gas volume bubbled per unit time. That is the gas volume bubbled per unit time. That means your gas flow rate, volumetric flow rate of the gas. Then time allowed for producing the final dispersion of the liquid. Then type of a dispersion, that is whether it's a gas liquid or liquid liquid or solid liquid. Then the quantities of the each phase required, how much quantity and how much uniformity, what is the product quality that is also essentially to be studied. Then the fineness of dispersion required to produce by mixing. <coughs> So all these are the different important factors and they are to be given priority for understanding of uh, these uh, dispersion processes. So for uh, vegetable oil hydrogenation it is the 3 kilowatt per 5 meter cube and uh, in the organic halogenation processes it is the 15 kilowatt per 5 meter cube. Again that depends on the process. Uh, what is, uh, and considering all these different parameters, one has to study the process of uh, dispersion. The next is a dissolution. Dissolution that is associated with your solids which are dissolved into the liquid to give you the solution. This is most common example which we see in our day to day life that is sugar or salt dissolved into the water. So the solids are dissolved into the liquid to produce a solution as the good circulation is to be provided around the solid particles. So that is the how much uh, uh, exposure of these solid surfaces to the liquid that will be going to give you or affecting the process of dissolution. So, in some dissolution processes that is your synthetic rubber or uh, solid resins, the viscosity of solution progressively increases. There so problem becomes more and more complicated if the viscosity that increases 
with the uh, concentration or progress of the reaction in case of your polymeric industries this becomes a problematic because the uh, viscosity as the polymerization progresses the viscosity increases so uh, the hence the final solution becomes highly viscous with a very high solid contents so for example the sodium chloride solution uh, a 15 percent sodium chloride solution in 10 meter cube tank may require 3 kilowatt energy however only 1% of carboxymethyl cellulose, that is a viscous solution you will get in a tank of 10 meter cube, you will require 10 to 15 kilowatts of energy. So much big difference that depends on the viscosity of the solution. The same volume that is there, same water that is there, even though the 15% sodium chloride and 1% carboxymethyl solution. So this 1% carboxymethyl cell, methyl cellulose that is going to give you the uh, much viscous solution. Uh, then the information for producing the dissolution that is the percentage of solid in suspension. So once the uh, solids are there, they are to be suspended first. So the process of suspension associated with the process of dissolution that is there. So, these solid particles which are in a suspension form, they will get slowly dissolved into the liquid and will again disappear. Because they are miscible in this case. The process of suspension, the solid particles are immiscible. In the process of dissolution, the solid particles are miscible or dissoluble. So your physical characteristics of gas and liquid at initial stages and final product. Then the solubility of the particles into the liquid and temperature that is going to affect uh, the solubility. Then allowable dispersion time, how much time has to be taken into consideration. The next important thing is the process of crystallization. So, in the process of crystallization, agitation and mixing systems, uh, they play a much uh, uh, role into the formation, in the process of formation of the crystals or the shape of the crystal, dimensions of the crystals, what will be the desired characteristics associated with those crystals. That is the art, uh, crystallization is a more towards art than your uh, science because it involves the small understanding of the details related to the process of crystallization. Uh, you must have uh, agitated in your organic process technology where agitation has to be done. If the agitation is good and you will get the good quality crystals in those experiments of uh, organic uh, chemical technology organic process industries uh, where the process of crystallization you have already experimented. Then the heat transfer application necessitating the good flow of solution passed through the heat transfer surfaces. Then handling of the crystals being generated. Then the information needed for mixing system design that is also there. The general description of the process and progressive change in the slurry and crystal characteristics during the process. The nature of crystal and crystal sensitivity. Nature of the crystal is very much essential to be studied in the uh, process of crystallization. Then the operating temperature pressure of the process. Then heat transfer uh, surface area available. Uh, whether the crystals remain suspended in the slurry or will settle down, that is also to be studied uh, or is going to affect a lot in the process of crystallization. The nucleus formation in the process of crystallization. Then the density of the crystals, liquors, then size of the crystals, then settling velocity of the crystals, all things are essential. Then crystallization rate and whether the crystals from slurry or deposit on the heat transfer surface. 
The next is the heat transfer associated with the process of mixing. The rate of heat transfer depends on the mixing pattern, how the mixing is uh, being achieved and on that the rate of heat transfer is going to affect. In this process of heat transfer you require turbulent chaotic conditions so that more uh, turbulence will be there, uh, more will be the rate of the heat transfer. So the rate of surface removal as uh, the more turbulence will be there, so the more uh, surface part particle or the more liquid particles will be exposed to the surface. So renewal, surface renewal, that means every time the new particles will be exposed to the solid particle. That is the surface renewal, rate of surface renewal at the heat transfer surface is much more essential in the process of heat transfer. Every time the new particles should be exposed to that surface. Then the agitation of the fluid to increase the heat transfer between the fluid and the coil or jacket in the vessel wall. Then the process of blending of miscible liquids. So it is the simple physical mixing operation. The process of blending is a simple miscible operation that will be there. A physical mixing operation without any chemical reaction. So no chemical reaction is associated in the process of the blending. Uh, the blending of two miscible liquids such as the ethyl alcohol and water that will be blended. Or you can say the blending process, the kerosene that is blended into the petrol or kerosene that is blended into your diesel. It's a general phenomena in your refineries. The kerosene is being uh, transferred to the petrol fraction or into the diesel fraction. That is the simple blending. It's a physical mixing without any chemical reaction. So it involves the liquid phases. Or even solids and liquids, uh, solids, they are, solids and solids, they are being blended. That is, in case of your polymer industry, the generated waste into the plant that is again recycled with the fresh. That is, the blending has been done. Blending of the waste into the fresh uh, raw material to increase the economy of the systems. Uh, then the change in the physical properties is uh, observed. The composition of the blend needed and the time allowed to obtain the final blend has considerable effect on energy requirement. The time required for one turnover depends on whether the components are readily miscible or they have the wide different properties. Then kerosene is blended into petrol, kerosene is blended into the diesel, fresh polymer blended with the recyclable polymer. Then the glycerin is blended in water. These are your different examples of the process of blending. Next is your chemical reaction. The rate of chemical reaction is influenced by the process of mixing into the vessel and which is uh, the heart of our chemical engineering. So the considerations of agitation are same as in the blending, dispersion and dissolution processes. For the above discussion, you can uh, clearly understand the importance of uh, the uh, mixing and agitation. And there is a need for uh, calculating the energy requirements, uniformity, dispersion of the final product all the things they are uh, much more essential then true optimization of that process is required so it is uh, the consideration of the energy requirement uniform dispersion that is uh, required and for that you are having the various process parameters then the type of the impeller then impeller diameter speed and the time and the geometry of that impeller. So all these different parameters that is to be considered for the processes. 
So all these are given different processes and they are much more interesting or important in respect of uh, your uh, mixing and agitation. Now the mixing operations can be carried out into the different types. So this uh, mixing operations can be carried out into the vertical tank. Then uh, where the agitator that is uh, entering in the vertical or uh, vertical entry of that agitator that is available. You can see it is vertically aligned. Now there are certain situations where the horizontal entry uh, of that uh, agitator or shaft that will be also there. So I can provide the agitator shaft associated with the horizontal entry and here I am going to fit a motor. So this can be the horizontal entry that will be there. Then uh, the shafts uh, they are if it is of a longer time a longer length then sometimes the shaft that is uh, uh, also fixed into the other end also in vertical as well as into the horizontal direction also can be fixed so that depends on the length of the shaft and the number of impellers here also i can provide the impeller or the blades you can see so uh, that is the process requirement how many number of the blades or uh, impellers that is required what will be the length of the shaft and depending on that i have to decide the uh, side entering mixer then horizontal mixer then you will also there are the planetary mixers also so vertical uh, tank mixers, side entering mixer, then horizontal mixer that means the complete uh, horizontal mixers that will be there, complete throughout the length uh, these mixers will be there. Uh, then several different kinds of the uh, mixing exist that is your mechanical mixers, the rotating, then you uh, can have the static mixers. Static mixers, these are nothing but the uh, in the pipe, uh, in the pipe itself, uh, there is the certain uh, geometry in the pipe itself, uh, the certain geometry which will be provided, the me mechanical arrangement or the metal plates, if I can provide the metal plate like this, like this inside this, so it is going to create the turbulence. That is your static mixers which are fitted into the pipe uh, with the certain baffles. Then the rotating tank mixers like in case of your concrete mixers. Uh, wherever on the construction sites on, at the time of uh, slab or concrete uh, generation or in case of your uh, road, uh, uh, roads, concrete roads construction. Uh, there also you can see these rotating tank mixers. The tank itself that is rotated. The huge uh, assembly for that uh, has to be provided. Because we are rotating the tank itself. We are not rotating in the impeller. In our chemical industries we generally do uh, with the impellers or the mixers. But uh, in this uh, civil industry that is concrete. The tank itself rotated, which requires a huge amount of the energy. That depends on the type of the material. Then the uh, agitator mixer, the paddle type, the different types of the uh, mix uh, impellers they can be used. Uh, then agitators working with the pump, uh, blasting liquids, that will be also there. Then agitator turning tanks uh, to the gas. So all these are the different uh, several operations uh, which are associated with the process of mixing. Uh, the choice of the agitator depends on the phases that needs to be mixed. So it's a basically the phase. Which are the different phases? How much uh, its viscosity, density, physical properties that is also going to affect uh, these mixing processes. So liquids uh, only uh, 
uh, or the liquid and the solid on liquid and the gas or liquid with the solids and the gas different permutations and combinations will be there then depending on the type of the phase and the viscosity uh, of the bulk uh, then agitator can be named as mixer kneader dough mixer amongst the other <coughs> Uh, the agitators used in the liquid can be placed on the top of the tank on the vertical position or whether it's a horizontal or the less common which are horizontal or less common uh, then the agitator is located at the bottom of the tank that is also one situation will be there now uh, you will say or come across the different uh, same terminology mixing and agitation so what is the basic difference in the process of mixing and agitation? So it is very essential one should know the process of uh, difference between the mixing and agitation. So we are using the two terms. The agitation refers to forcing a fluid by some mechanical means. A certain mechanical means is needed in the process of agitation to flow us in a cir <coughs> circulatory or other pattern inside a vessel. <coughs> a certain flow pattern is essentially to be developed into the process of agitation. Now, when we are using the common type of agitators, that is a circulatory motion that will be generated. So it is either a circulatory flow pattern or the other definite pattern. So pattern development is essential in case of a process of agitation. Then the mixing that is usually implies the taking two or more separate phases generally it's a two or more separate phases such as your fluid and powder solid or two fluids and causing them to be randomly distributed through one another random distribution not concerned about the final quality concerned to a specific extent uniform mixing chahiye. Maha pe I am not going to give the importance to the whether that is uniformly or highly uniformly distributed or not. And in this process of agitation, it's a circulatory or the other flow pattern that is developed. In the process of mixing, it is randomly distributed through one another. That is the major difference. Then the method of uh, mixing fluids, it is incorporating the 